Mainstream evangelical churches are dealing with a problem, angry Christians. And it is a problem because it is a sin. But blaming Doug Wilson for addressing it is like blaming the janitor for the mess. Is Doug Wilson the one creating all the angry Christians? Is it the Moscow mood affecting everyone? Or is this alienation happening because mainstream evangelical churches aren't addressing the very real issues most Christians face? The words from a pastor halfway across America might be helpful to you, but they're not for you. So in understanding what Tim Keller and Big Eva teaches and what Doug Wilson's teaching, we can see the audiences of both men. We can see the sins of both sides, and we can see the crybabies on both sides. But none of that should affect our view of these men and their ministries. They're both faithful men of God that we can learn a great deal from. I would actually postulate that mainstream evangelical teaching is making the angry Christians, and Doug Wilson deals with the mess. I know, I know, I said it out loud. Doug Wilson deals with the mess created by the Alistair Beggs and the Tim Kellers of the world. And that actually Tim Keller with his very specific congregation is far more disconnected from the average Christian than Doug Wilson. First off, these guys are not your pastor. Okay, internet's awesome, but we can use it the wrong way. Doug Wilson's speaking to specific people in a specific place. He's speaking to conservative refugees in a liberal town. Tim Keller, on the other hand, is speaking to other types of people, people who came from conservative places and ended up in a liberal town because they wanted the liberal town. Everyone else watching these guys is in their own town, far removed, and guess what? Tim Keller's not your pastor. Neither's Doug Wilson, for that matter. Unless you go to Christkirk in Moscow, Idaho, you should have your own local church. If you don't, get one. You can check out the CREC website for a good one near you. (laughs) <laughs> okay, or the TGC Church Finder, all right? So it's a wonderful thing that we can learn from these guys, but we have to be careful to understand that we are divorcing both men's teaching from the fruit when we watch them on the internet. We're not at Redeemer Church, and we're not in Moscow, Idaho. However, we see the flaming arrows flying back and forth. The Moscow mood is harsh, and people claim it's unloving, and I have not found that to be true at all. The third wayers and the gospel-centered people are not equipping people to live faithful, faithfully and counterculturally is the charge. And I definitely have found that to be true in some cases. People like me who have been angry for a long time sometimes get a little rambunctious and overly zealous. And that can be sinful. That's what they mean by the Moscow mood. But it's also sinful to judge your Christian brothers and sisters by a worldly standard and not be loving towards them. Who's actually making refugees and who's taking them in? See, Tim Keller was speaking to people who found themselves in a liberal place. It's clear from his sermons that he was challenging the worldview of people, and he was very careful not to add a volatile mix of politics to his messages, specifically because he knew his congregation. And I applaud Tim Keller and his ability to read his congregation and speak God's word to them in ways that they could begin to apply it. The same way I applaud Doug Wilson. Doug Wilson has attracted families, not just angry white men but many people who felt that the cultural zeitgeist was bringing a war to their front step. He's speaking to a very different audience, but Pastor Doug Wilson is preaching the same gospel that Pastor Tim Keller did. The difference is in how they tell people to apply it. And there should be differences when one audience is embracing the worldview of the culture around them and one audience is rejecting it. The message is faithful, but the presentation and application will be different. Doug Wilson's used the internet to find angry people, explain why they're angry, and then he's telling them to repent and build families. In essence, he's telling them to be steadfastly Christian. The subtle message from the Gospel Coalition and other groups is simply that being steadfastly Christian is a bad thing, and it becomes less subtle when they openly criticize their Christian brothers and sisters and then shut down conversation about the supposed offenses. The Gospel Coalition, Kevin DeYoung, and Lig Duncan have no interest in being part of the conversation. It seems like they only had one grenade to throw, and no one told them it was from a toy soldier kit. So who's trying to talk about the issues, and who is shutting down the conversation? It's precisely that they're just telling people to calm down that I say they're not helping the situation and creating the refugees. I mean, remember that time you were really upset and someone told you to just calm down about it? If you did happen to calm down, I bet it was despite the fact that someone told you to. There are lots of Christians who are literally seeing satanic displays, satanic book clubs, trannies taking over libraries, and hatred of straight white men in their workplaces. So why isn't anyone talking about this directly from the pulpit? The line is because it isn't gospel-focused, it's political. Well, that's convenient for the secularists running culture into the ground. 
All they have to do is slap a label on something that says political and Christians will leave their beliefs at home next to their dusty Bible. It's the issue that these things are not being addressed from the pulpit that I think is causing spiritual refugees. Of course they're angry. Of course they go seeking answers. Tim Keller pushed a third way to people who are bending toward liberal and come from a conservative background. C.R. Wiley gives perspective on this in a throwback episode of Cross Politic a while ago. So it works really well for Keller's audience to push a third way. Kellerites need to come back to a biblical worldview, just like angry refugee Christians do, but they come from a much different route. If it gave that same message to everyone who's being canceled for their beliefs, then guess what? It's going to make them mad. I know. I was one of those people. I was an angry Christian. And people are sick of it. They want to be Christian, and they don't want to cave on cultural issues. So just like I did, they go and find people online who are addressing the issues. I was a much angrier person before I found Doug Wilson. I've since calmed down a lot because I see how to address these issues biblically, call my anger what it is, sin, and deal with it by confessing and repenting of it. Things I learned from Doug Wilson. And the pastors that make me mad to listen to are those who are staying silent or caving on issues that we shouldn't cave on, like going to trans weddings and bringing a gift. Doug Wilson's dad, Jim Wilson, built a community that people go to. Now the entire town is known for its flavor of Christian steadfastness and openness. That is good fruit. It's so good that people aren't just finding the ideas online. They're literally flocking to towns that are steadfastly and unapologetically Christian. While the Lig Duncans and the Kevin DeYoungs are faithfully teaching the basics, but they're not addressing, if they don't start addressing the elephants in the room, then they're going to create more spiritual refugees from ineffectual churches that are not equipping believers for the times they live in. And those refugees, just like me, are going to continue running right to Moscow.